Hi everyone, we will be looking at how Red Hat Ansible Tower can be integrated with Jenkins in a CI-CD process. But before that, let's look at a generic CI-CD flow as shown in the diagram. In this diagram, the developer will pick up an issue, bug or enhancement from platforms such as Jira or Azure DevOps and work on it. So he or she will perform a code commit into the Git repository, such as GitHub or GitLab. When that happens, it will trigger off a webhook towards the CI tools, such as Jenkins, to start the CI process. This will in turn lead to the build being pushed to the package or binary repository, such as Nexus or JFrog Artifactory. At the end of which, the CD process will begin. In this case, we are looking at using Ansible to perform the continuous delivery process. So Ansible is a powerful tool for IT automation and can be used in the CI-CD process to do things such, such as target environment provisioning and then deploying applications on them. So CI tools such as Jenkins is well known for implementing CI-CD. And in the case of Jenkins, shell scripts are commonly used for provisioning environment or deploy apps using the pipeline flow. Although this can work, it is often cumbersome to maintain and reuse scripts in the long run. The purpose of using Ansible Tower in the pipeline flow is to reuse roles and playbooks for provisioning, leaving Jenkins only as a process orchestrator instead of a shell script executor. So we can see that uh, over here, we have the Ansible Tower plugin uh, that's available within Jenkins that can be used to trigger off the Ansible Tower to perform automation for the continuous delivery portion. So what will happen is that the Ansible Tower can perform things such as infrastructure provisioning and application deployment. With all the logs being saved to external loggers such as Splunk and Elasticstack. And because of the large number of modules that's available in Ansible, it can work on a large variety of different platforms and be able to deploy the infrastructure, whether is it on-prem or on the clouds, and be able to deploy the applications uh, as well. So um, one of the possible workflow, right, that we will be seeing will look like this. So you can see over here that the first thing that will happen upon a Jenkins or webhook trigger is that the codes will get pulled from a Git repo. The application will get built, unit tests will be get conducted and performed uh, within the Jenkins pipeline. This will be followed by integration test, a code scan, before the artifact is being uploaded into the Nexus repository in our case. Then we will wait for the approval to deploy to production. Once the approval is granted, the application will get deployed uh, by Ansible Tower. This is how it looks like uh, within Jenkins. So this flow is actually very similar to the one that's depicted in the uh, blog as uh, seen over here, whereby we look at how Ansible can be integrated with Jenkins, right? And um, it talks about infrastructure provisioning as well as application deployment. So in our case, we are focusing on the application deployment piece, right? Obviously Ansible can be very easily used to deploy infrastructure um, with better it be it in the uh, public cloud or better be it on the on-prem, right? It's just that uh, this is not the focus of this particular demo as uh, we have seen this in other places already. So the focus that uh, we will be doing over here is purely on the application deployment piece, whereby we will be using Ansible Tower, right, to deploy the applications um, to the target machine. So let's look at what we have. So this is the Ansible Tower dashboard, right? So you can see over here that um, there are many templates that was uh, tested recently, right? So uh, we'll be running the one for application continuous uh, delivery. This is our Nexus. You can see over here that the repository manager um, for the Maven releases is empty. So what will happen later on is that 
the Jenkins pipeline is going to be executed and it will start to build the artifacts and deposit the uh, newly built artifact uh, into here, this particular um, even release um, directory, the repository. Over here, we have the Sonar Cube. If you were to do a refresh, you can see that um, there is nothing here as well. As part of the process, we will also be building um, and doing a code scan, right? Just to make sure that um, whatever that we are deploying is of good uh, quality. Next, we look at the repository that uh, we will be uh, working on today, right? So uh, it is Quarkus test that uh, we will be using. So it really is a Hello World uh, kind of project that we have. Uh, pretty much we are looking at uh, what the uh, Quarkus uh, website has when it comes to creating the first uh, application. We are reusing a lot of the codes um, based on the guideline that is provided over here. Right? The main thing that is different, of course, is that uh, we have added the um, Jenkins pipeline and that we have updated the uh, pom.xml file. Right? So if you were to look at the uh, Jenkins pipeline, uh, what you will see is a series of different uh, stages uh, that uh, we're going to be using today. Right? So you can see over here that uh, we have defined things like the Git uh, URL or uh, pointing to our GitHub, sorry, our GitLab um, instance, right? So this is going to be the Git uh, repository that we will be using. Um, we have different stages, right? So the first stage is the build stage. Second stage, we are going to run a unit test, integration test, followed by Sunar Cube analysis. We're going to publish the artifact to uh, Nexus. Then we have the approval stage before we do the deployment using Ansible Tower, right? So you can see over here that um, we'll basically be calling the uh, function as seen over here. What this is going to do is that it is going to trigger the uh, Ansible Tower plugin that has been installed in Jenkins to start the deployment itself, right? So um, what are some of the stuff that we are sending over, right? You can see over here that these are the variables or uh, we call them extra variables in Ansible, right? That will be used as part of the deployment uh, workflow. So um, let's just take a very quick look at uh, this uh, particular plugin, right? So if you were to go to the uh, Jenkins plugin website, you'll be able to see that uh, it has this uh, plugin for Ansible Tower, which allows you to deploy, um, app, I mean, in this case, applications, right? Uh, with the help of uh, Ansible Tower. So you can see over here that uh, it will tell you what are the things that you need to configure within Jenkins in order to be able to use uh, the Ansible Tower plugin. Right. So um, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, basically, you can follow this and you'll be able to um, set this thing up. So um, having said that, right, um, I'll just show you very quickly what I have in the uh, configurations uh, for the Jenkins. So you can see that uh, we have different things configured, right? Like um, the Maven, um, the Jenkins location, right? Uh, the Sonar Cube server, right? Um, things like uh, GitLab. And over here, uh, this is the Ansible Top plugin that uh, I was uh, showing you guys um, earlier. Right? So you pass in the credentials, the URL, uh, we can pay the name, right? Um, then, you know, very quickly you can do a test on the connection and then it should return you a success to show that Jenkins is able to communicate with Ansible Tower using REST or API, right? So it means that everything is all good, right? So then if you were to look at um, the Jenkins pipeline, right? So this is what we have uh, at the pipeline at this point in time, right? So you can see that the Sonar Cube uh, quality gate, everything is passing. Uh, it looks uh, green. Um, it's all good, right? So um, the stuff that we're going to do today is that uh, we are going to update um, the uh, hello row, right? Um, I'm just going to change it to uh, my hello row, right? Um, I have to update uh, the unit test as well, right? To my hello row, right? Just to make sure that everything is uh, working properly. So before we start, right, we also want to check to make sure that um, the application at this point in time um, it's not really uh, deployed properly, right? So you can see over here that um, that 
it cannot connect right because it is because the application has not been uh, deployed so the next thing that we do right is that i'm going to um update the um Unit test first. Before updating the app itself. So once we do the git push. It is going to trigger off um, a new build, right? So you can see over here that this is uh, triggered by me, right? So you can see that um, the logs itself, it is going to start to do the build. Everything is good. Before we start to do the unit test. So this is good as well. Then it runs the integration test all good before it starts the sonar cube analysis right so it has pushed uh to nexus as we can see from the uh the logs right so you can see that it is uploading um to the nexus um repository so the next step really is waiting for the approval so uh i just wanted to show you that uh, this has been updated right so you can see that this is my hello row same thing for the unit uh test uh then if we were to go and look at um here right so if we do a refresh you can see that the jar file has been uh built um during the pipeline execution right and then uh, over here, if we were to do a uh, reload, right? So you can see that uh, this is all good from Sonar Cube perspective. All the conditions have passed. Uh, the, we don't find anything uh, wrong with it. Uh, hence, uh, you know, everything is good, right? So the next thing that uh, I'm going to do, right, is that um, we are going to approve it. Right, so we just say uh, proceed. So upon approval, it is going to trigger a REST uh, API call towards uh, Ansible Tower. Right, so you can see that uh, what will happen is that it is going to go to Ansible Tower. The parameters will get passed in right from um, Jenkins. You can see over here that it will have gone through the deployment itself um, to deploy the artifact before it does a very simple uh, health checks just on the endpoint, make sure that everything is good. So, um, you know, that it is uh, all working properly. So if you were to go back over here, right, you can see that uh, everything is successful, right? The app deployment is successful the web application health checks is successful as well. So you can see that everything is nicely uh, integrated uh, with the uh, Ansible tool. Right? So you can see that, uh, you know, you just come here, you will be able to see the, the job itself. It's similar to what we went and uh, checked um, earlier on. So you can see that uh, it's all done, right? If you were to go back um, over here, can see that uh, it's all green and the uh, pipeline uh, has successfully uh, finished execution right so um, if you were to come back over here you do a refresh you can see that my hello world application right has been successfully um, deployed right so um, the purpose over here right is really just to demonstrate that ansible tower can be used in this case, right, in conjunction with Jenkins in a CICD process. So um, it is something that is um, that we think is good, right, uh, because 
you know, there are rows within Ansible, playbooks within Ansible, and workflow in this case, as you can see, that can be easily uh, used. So in this case, we can um, be used in uh, continuous delivery, delivery, sorry, and deployment. Okay. Um, thanks for watching.